Your word self assessment two is much better, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let's go for this case. Mm -hmm. Now this is seventy five year old. Uh present with the nursing home brought to the ER for one day of altered mental status and decreased urine output. Mm. Let me just put that here. Okay. Now the vitals uh, blood pressure is 102 over 68 mm -hmm. heart rate is 110 respiratory rate 16 febrile. Okay, full history, like he, he was just brought for auto mental status, degrees urine output, he's unable to give any history. Nursing home staff says that he has been having watery stool for the past four days. Mm. Okay, so four day watery stool. He has seven mm. to ten loose stool per day. Stools has mm. no foul smelling, no mucus. He has been drinking fruit juice, oral formula, for the last three days. He has not urinated in the past 12 hours. They denied any history of fever, chills, chest pain, shortness of breath or abdominal pain. Past medical history, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, osteoarthritis. He does not smoke or drink alcohol. Father died at age of 90 with Alzheimer. Medication, lisinopril and pH insulin, metoprolol, simvastatin, aspirin, ibuprofen, multivitamin. So I think it's kind of a dehydration case. Okay, so how do you approach this case? So she came in the office? In the ER. She came in the ER. Hmm. So I'm going to do our ER, um, the police, BS. But what's, what's your differential? I'm thinking either a UTI causing ultimate of status or it could be um, polypharmacy causing ultimate status because she's on a lot of drugs so that can cause like delirium, dementia, I don't know. I'm thinking... Or she is, mm -hmm. yeah. or she is the high, yeah, volume depletion. That's the only thing. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, because of diarrhea, this causes uh, dehydration, can cause pre-renal failure. That's one thing. Another thing, she's, has, she's diabetic, so it could be hypoglycemia. It could be yeah. she's it's hyperlipidemic, it could be usually, hypertension, stroke. Usually an alternate of status in an elderly, especially from a nursing home, is UTI the cause. Because she has decreased your output too. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you know so an alternate so yeah. so order test to come out. Yeah, that's true. So let's it could be let's do everything. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she's not that unstable, so we yeah. can do the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. So she's mildly dehydrated. Her heart mm -hmm. and lung is fine. Abdomen is scaphoid. Hyperactive bowel sounds. Prostate is normal in size. CNS is fine. Prostate? I thought it was a female. Okay. No, no, it's a male. Skin oh, is a dry. Yes, yeah, it's a dry mm -hmm. with poor turgor, no rash. Mm -hmm. Petechia or bruises. Okay, so that's the it's just dehydration. Dehydration. Uh, everything so else, physical is normal. Definitely. So what do you yeah, want to do? We have to do the cut, cut green. Let's do the pulse, police BS, pulse. Oh yeah, police BS, then cut. IV excess, IV fluid. Okay. Input, output. <laughs> no, input, input. Oh, she's not admitted. Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay, what do you mean? We can start. Police, cardiac, cardiac B monitor. BP monitor. What else? Let's do EKG. And let's do finger stick glucose. Let's do CBC, CMP. Hmm. Chest x ray. You should have checked her um, ABG too. Why didn't you check her ABG? You, it could be metabolic alcohol. 
That's a good idea, yeah. Thank you for that. I'm gonna do that now. CMP, I'm gonna let CMP running like every six hours. Is that every eight hours? Just to see. So there is this thing, and I wanted to do one thing. She's dehydrated, yeah. IV fluid is the main thing right now that we should do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, let's, let's do the other, the cut, the colonies, and so is the chest x ray analysis, urine culture. Urine culture. Yes, sir. OBT. TSH. Yeah. Okay. The profile, just basic stuff. Mm, yeah. And did you do all uh, HB and C? Yeah, I'm gonna do that too. Yeah. Check for call box. I mean, a call box, ABG. Yeah, that's it. You have to do H capital, then it's like a weird way of writing it. I don't know, H, B, then something like that. Yeah, it's, it only picks up that much. I to think be H this, this hemo, globin, globin, A1. A1. See, no. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now, let's move what to else? Let's do, huh? Let's order, what do you, let's do Foley catheter, what do you think? You already did your input output, so doesn't that mean they're going to put it in? Yeah. I wanted you to put, like, I don't know why you did input output just before the catheter, but I don't know. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Wait, like, isn't that weird? You did input output before you did the catheter. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. We did urine culture, right? Yes, we did urine culture and urine analysis already. So let's get some results. I need to know yeah, the yeah, UA. Yeah, that's good. What do, you, what, do you want, what do you want to know? I want to know the UA and CBC. And, I mean, BU and creatinine. Glucose is what? So there are three types of renal failure. How do you differentiate between the two? So the pre-renal and post-renal is a ratio greater than 20 to 1, whereas renal is less than 20 to 1. No, the, you, mean, you mean the BU1 over creatinine? That's what? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the fraction of excretion of NA so in renal will be more than... would be hmm. more than 1% and... 1% or 2%? 1%. 1%. And it's less than 1% in, in pre-renal. Yeah, so so anyone who presented with dehydration, we have to ask, like, per, number one, what is his hemodynamic status? Is he dehydrated? Yeah. Is he volume yeah. overloaded? Yeah. Okay. This one, so that's why sometimes we can order central venous pressure. And mm -hmm. then the second thing we ask, what type of renal failure? Was it pre-renal, mm -hmm. post-renal? And that's the second mm -hmm. thing. Third thing, we ask, is there any need for urgent hemodialysis? So what are mm -hmm. the indications for urgent hemodialysis? So AEIOU, right? Um, acidosis, uh, electrolyte imbalance, uh, intoxication, um, overloading of fluid, and uremia. Yeah, so this were the AIEOU. And then the fourth one and the last one, we ask what is most likely etiology. And the etiology is depend the phena, phena less than one, that's a pre renal, more than one renal, mm -hmm. or the sodium, if it's more than 20 urine sodium, that's a renal, if it's less than 20, that's a pre renal. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the thing. 
So mm-hmm. if there's like if there's a pre renal, what do you want to do in this patient? He's taking lisinopril. She's taking ibuprofen. Yeah. No way. We, um, we want to discontinue. Huh? We want to discontinue yeah, those. Stop the answer. Yeah, yeah. Stop that. Because those are very important to discontinue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I want to do something. What do you think I should do right now? After I found this is a pretty now I want to admit her, right? Yeah. yeah. And give her the word. Let's do the vitals. V panic vitals. Uh, pentaprazole, maybe I'm not need it. Mm. Do you order pentaprazole on everyone? No, not everyone, I think. Yeah, yeah. There are certain, certain cases you don't order it, right? I, I don't know which one. So far, we've been ordering. <laughs> NPO, V-Panic, and then... I'm sorry, do you mind? Um, can I take a phone call? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's second. okay, that's okay, go ahead. Never mind, just missed already. Okay. okay. So you did the V panic, right? Yeah, I did the V panic. Now, what do you want to do? So, this I want to do the vitals. This is. You didn't serious... tell me what happened. Hmm? What, what, what was the issue? She was just dehydrated, that's it? Her urine was normal? Yeah, he had the pre renal as a team, yeah. Oh, so okay. now the vitals I want to do it every two hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what else should I do right now? You want to check? Hmm? Check input output. Okay. Nice. Um, we did that. We ordered okay. that the input output. I think it's still there. Yeah. Okay. So what else? What do you want to do? Diet. Let's. I'm gonna give him diabetic and renal diet. I'm, I shouldn't be put him on NPO. Yeah. So what else? Uh, input. Input output is not there. I think it's cancelled. Really? Okay. I'm gonna put it again. It's not on the list. Okay. Um, so what else? The, what am I? I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do 24 hour urine protein. Mhm. Okay for diabetes and stuff. What else? What do you want to do? I'm going to measure his weight. I'll do it daily. I'm going to do a quick check, huh? Okay. I'm going to do a sliding scale and so on. Put him on diabetic diet and low protein. Twenty-four hours. Wait, I'm gonna keep it daily, every day. I could check glucose. I'm gonna do it every six hours. It's not here. I'm gonna cancel the NPO. Uh, insulin, I can give him insulin because he's hyperglycemic. How much was it sugar? Like it's around 200. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't give uh, value for it. But uh, I'm guessing that's why. And they, they did heparin for DVT prophylaxis too. Mm. Well, can you tell me in which cases you don't get CPI? Mm. Which cases? You, ask- you mean which cases you don't give PPI? Is that your question? Yeah. 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 So, so when, ask- when someone, when, hmm? when, so there are there are criteria. There's a table about uh, for someone, anyone in the ICU, you want to put them on PPI. Someone who have mm-hmm. increased intracranial pressure or trauma, you put them on PPI. Someone on mm-hmm. a steroid. You want to put them on PPI, and then what else? Someone who's having GI bleeding in the past three months, you got them on 
PPI. PPI. Yeah, there is a criteria. I'm gonna send it to you. It's a okay. specific people, not everyone. Yeah, mm. everyone in, in PPI. Just those. Because are, our mnemonic has that. That's why. Yeah. So this is what I what I do. Yeah. What I do. I just write it, and then when it comes to it, I just cancel. <laughs> I, yeah, sometimes I, that's what I do, just to go for the new one. Okay, so now let's let's check how's he doing. So what do you want to do now? I don't know, monitor his CDC and B1 and see if it's better. Yeah, let's just, I, I have the BMPs working in the background, so I'm just going to see him next day. So he was just dehydrated. Now, now that I gave him fluid, he's feeling much oh. better. His condition is improved. He's alert oriented. Mm -hmm. Everything okay, so that's that's good news that he's getting better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna discontinue that. Discontinue that. Let's continue glucose. I don't need that anymore. I don't need a sliding scale. Remove bed rest. Remove this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna give him a lot of oral fluid. Mm -hmm. Fall. No, I don't even need that anymore. He's he's doing better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's about it. When do you order chest X-ray in this patient? Like in just in the case if the case goes to a different direction. This if the patient have pericardial rub or rails. So mm -hmm. you you want to do chest X-ray? That would be very important in this case. How about if the patient having fever? Wait, what do you order? What is blood culture? Um, wait, listen. What do you mean by pericardial rub or rail? That means that he's having pleural effusion. Yeah. So if you have this thing, then you then chest X-ray would be a must. Yeah. Yeah. Of That's, course. Yeah. Okay. How about yeah? So let me let's let's just finish the screening. What do you want to this and then we'll go of the we'll discuss if the case could He's go a different direction. Counseling vaccine and let's see his colonoscopy stuff. So he's seventy five. Let's give him colonoscopy. What else? Colonoscopy, triple A. Remember, triple A stopped at eighty. No, not eighty. Mm -hmm. Was he a smoker? No, no, not a sound. You can do a low. Yeah, he's a smoker. Hmm. CT scan. CT. Low CT, whatever. The CT scan. I usually just write a CT scan. Let me see if those. Okay. Yeah, but like you should have written chest. Or I guess it's it'll come up. Yeah. No, 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 steroid alarm in the town. Okay. Put on 
Doza Nimokoka and Tidev Oh, uh, yeah, it's finished. Yeah, so so w when do we order renal ultrasound, immediate renal ultrasound, blood culture? If you hear a brewery, you can order, uh, not brewery, like, um, mm, yeah, oh, blood so, culture uh, if he has fever. Yeah, so if this patient have the same presentation with a fever, then we order blood culture immediate renal mm -hmm. ultrasound, urine culture, and we start him on Cipro. Mm -hmm. That's an what are we thinking at that point? Huh? What, what, what are you gonna, like, what's the diagnosis for that? Like, what do you mean, if there is a fever? Yeah. Yeah, yeah then this case could be pyelonephritis. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. that's what we're thinking. How about if the patient is present with blood pressure of 160 on the same presentation, how do you do that? I would do a renal MRI. Yeah, and we want to manage his hypertension immediately. Yeah. Right away, if he's not on hypertensive. Mm -hmm. How about if there's a signs of obstruction? What do you do? Oh, like a BPH? Like a post renal? Yeah. Mm, I would give him alpha blocker. I will do like a, a CAT scan and then do a alpha blocker. Yeah, you can do urgent renal ultrasound or CAT scan and you consult urology, that's important one. Oh, oh, you consult urology. Yeah. How do you treat recovery diuresis? Because this patient... What does that mean? Huh? So because you remember in the when you have a pre-renal and then you treat uh -huh. it, pre-renal failure, you treat it, there is a stage, mm -hmm. there is an, it's called recovery where they their kidney regain its function so starts producing a lot of fluid so the patient will urinate a lot so what do you treat this condition this is called recovery diuresis oh i have no idea so you switch the 0.9 normal saline to 0.4 normal saline 0.45 normal saline and frequent electrolyte monitoring Oh, okay, then he's gonna be like volume overload, like he's gonna have dilutional. Yeah, not necessarily overload. It's like, yeah, like you can say overload, and also because the kidney regain its function, so it will, mm. it will work even stronger than before because it's a mm. prenal, pre renal, it didn't die yet, mm. so it's gonna work so hard to produce urine, get rid of all the water. Yeah. Mm. So in in other words, you you decrease you decrease the the content in the water. Like point five is like half of normal saline, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. <laughs> This is still here after the case ended. That's funny. Okay. Now, this six months old female with vomiting and diarrhea. Blood pressure is 95 over 55. Weight is 7.2 kg. Heart rate is 155. Temperature is 38. How old is the baby? Is a six month old white female brought for mm -hmm. three day history of vomiting, diarrhea, low grade temperature. Mm. A mother brings her to the clinic today because the infant become increasingly irritable, fussy. She's awake and today she become much more sonant. Mother report that she had approximately eight to ten bowel movements a day for the past two mm. days. She has been giving the infant increased number of breastfeeds at approximately mm -hmm. three hours interval. However, the child frequently vomits the milk mm -hmm. and also runny diarrhea. The mm -hmm. 
the mm. baby has refused to take any of rice cereals. Mm. Mother report vomiting is non bilious. It mainly mm. consists of partial digested milk. It's not mm. projectile. It's non bloody. Mm. The area is watery and yellow. There mm -hmm. does not appear to be in any blood or mucus in the stool. Mother mm. report that the baby temperature has been high, 101. Mm. Okay, and the mom reports that her visit to the doctor about three weeks ago for immunization mm. was almost uh, his weight, uh, sh her weight was 8 kg. So, how mm. do you approach this case? I can give you the past medical wow. history. Mm. It's all, for everything is fine. Immunization is fine. Social history is okay. The Nance. baby came in the ER or the office? In the ambulatory clinic. In the office. So, what do you want to do? Now, first. Um, I guess I'm going to check the baby for signs of dehydration, like mucous membrane. Yeah, so just a physical maybe exam. Maybe skin further. Because if, if I do see signs of dehydration, then I will change the person to ER. Yeah. This is the physical. So the patient is well developed, well nourished. She does not fight against the examiner during physical exam. And dear fontanelle is open, depressed. But her fontanelle is closed. Eye slightly sunken with dark circle underneath them. Tympanic membrane are pale with good light reflex. Neck is supple. There is no evidence of meningeal irritation. There is no cervical lymphadenopathy. Oropharynx is fine. Heart rate is regular. There is two out of four systolic ejection murmur around the left sternal border. Okay. Examination shows pulses two plus in all four extremities, and there is the capillary refill about three to four seconds. Okay. On genital urinary, there is mm, diaper dermatitis. Mm -hmm. and the patient is irritable. Skin mm -hmm. decreased turgor. So, what's your differential of this diarrhea and vomiting? Yeah. I mean, it could just be like a, a normal, like, gastroenteritis in a baby because the baby does not have blood stool. It's not like non bilious, not projectile, like nothing. And nausea and, I mean, um, vomiting and diarrhea. It's just like a normal GI. Yeah, what else? That's that's the most important um, one. What else? It's not meningitis because they said that there's no signs of meningeal, so that's out because that was part of my differential too. Um, Could be also uh, the susception, appendicitis. Okay. But there's no... Hyperconcentrated but infant family. In susception, family. baby would have episodes of, of crying spells in between. Yeah, yeah, it's and very low in the differential, but no. it's just... Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Like, it's just okay. a And plus, you would see an olive mask, not olive mask, the sausage mask on the physical exam. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't say that. Yeah, you're so, right, yeah. But this is, like, just a broad differential to think of. It could be antibiotic-induced yeah. diarrhea, could be, yeah. you know, shot and purpura, renal yep. disease-induced hemolytic anemia, could be toxic ingestion, like mercury, uh -oh. iron... <laughs> How do you work up a baby? Hmm? How do you work up a baby? Yeah, yeah. How do, do you mean the the workup? What do you order, right? Yeah, I don't know. The babies are like, what do you do? A CBC, the same thing. So now he's dehydrated. So what do you want to do? The first thing. I want to put him in the ER and give him fluids. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you're right. Yeah, just put. I him. don't know. Does he? Does he need IV fluid? Yeah, yeah, obviously, yes. yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Let's put the police BS and we'll go from from there. Both. Because this scenario reminded me of a U World question I just did the other day. Yeah. Exactly same. And the answer choice was, oh, just give baby normal diet PO. 
water and diet. Not peel, water, sorry. Mm. Just give normal. Like, I guess the baby was older in the question. That's why, maybe. Mm, I see. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because six yeah. months, like, I have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's true. And actually, that kid was drinking a lot of orange juice. <laughs> So the thing was like, tell them to decrease the orange. Yeah, juice. I know uh, the question. Like that causes diarrhea too. Yeah. Good juice. Yeah. So now, after the ER orders, let's do some important orders like CBC, CMP, chest x ray, lipid, panel, TSH, and the uh, stool. You're gonna do all of that on a baby? Yeah, yeah, let's just do that. Not The lipid panel is not important, but everything else may be important. Oh, like okay. stool, FOBT, those are important. ESR. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see you. culture, your analysis, your culture, blood culture. I see the packs. You did see him, right? Mm, yeah. He's maybe PT, 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 and that's it. I think he's fine. It's not Okay, so hmm. let's 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 do the things. So CBC CMP. Let's keep that every six hours. Portable. It's not important this one. To search. Still, that's an important one. That's the most important. Let's do close mm -hmm. bacteria. So deficit toxin. I got the blood of one parasite. See mm -hmm. What else do you do? Um. Hmm. That should be enough. Yeah. You know anybody who took the exam recently? Any of your students? Or a friend? Yeah, I know a friend who took it. How was their exam? Did they give you feedback? Yeah, he said it was doable. It wasn't that hard. Said like mm -hmm. because yeah most because he said because most of the students who take it like they are in residency and they don't want people to <laughs> flank their residency they don't wanna because they have to take it by the end of PGY one so they they don't mm -hmm. bring it they don't make it too hard to pass yeah mm -hmm. so now what do you want to do with this patient what do you think let's get some results right. So the CBC shows white blood cell count of 11, hemoglobin is 14, hematocrit is 42, platelet is fine, lymphocyte, BMP sodium is 131, chloride is 106, okay, catheterized urine specimen yielded a scant amount of dark amber clean fluid. Specific gravity is 1.032, negative for esterase and stuff, but there is 1 to 5 white blood cells, no cast. Ok, 
ओके वन टू फाइव प्लस वन वाइट प्लस वन बनो का एंड लोगों का रेस्ट्रेस एंड नाव बनने के लिए या द डिमेंशन and then that's so this patient is a case of a severe dehydration so let's just admit him to the yeah. patient yeah because there is mild dehydration there is moderate and there is severe it looks mm. like a severe one so vitals i'm going to put it how do you gauge huh? how do you gauge moderate and how do you gauge severe from the symptoms and signs like if there is mm. that's most like blood pressure that's that's the most important one Now, so you want to do vitals, V panic, okay? So bed rest, and put out what? I don't think he's gonna run around. Huh? <laughs> he's a yeah, yeah. I'm just writing the mnemonic, and then I cancel I, it after. I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, bed rest and put V panic, P A. Let's give him potassium. Why? He's losing a lot of. Okay. Yeah, you may be mm. depleted for that. What else? Let me give him his regular feed. Like you don't want baby to starve. Yeah. What do you want to give him? Why are you giving him potassium? Well, how much was his potassium? You said how much potassium? Hmm. Don't so this see step three. They don't go to the dose of potassium. This you do, like dose. No, how much was his lab potassium lab? Why are you giving him potassium? Oh, it was on the lower side. Okay. Okay. So it's three point two. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. So now, now what do you want to do? Just a second. Mm -hmm. Can you? Okay. Okay. No, no, they they left. Okay, so now what do you now what do you want to do? Uh, monitor him. Yeah, just check him Is out him, in four hours. Oh, can you give formula? Can you give him formula? Yeah, that's that's this one. Yeah. So you want to give him formula? Yeah, you're right. Which um, one do you want to give him? Infant hydrolyzed. Or infant with eye or anything, do it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't hydrolyze his eye. Okay. What else? What do you want to do now? Um, I guess monitor him to make sure that he. Yeah, like we more. examine him every four hours. That. Right. Just keep checking him, like, you know, every few hours to make sure he's. His baby was not like so bad. I mean, I know his physical signs like eyes were sunken, skin turgor was low, but I don't know. Okay, so a quick physical, and then same thing. You advance it for four more hours. The quick mm -hmm. physical, yeah. No, the patient is getting better. So this. Advance it to the next day. I think I'm gonna discharge him if he's good by then tomorrow. So let's advance for tomorrow. Did you see the movie Aladdin and Jasmine? No, I saw the commercial <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, I remember. Did you see? I saw it. Yeah, I remember you like your Jasmine. You were you were in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where? How was it? You know, I've seen actually, I've had, it was good. It was really good. Actually, it's it's getting number one. It's beating even the Avengers Endgame. And... Avengers? Oh, really? Yeah, you know, I I went to see the the Aladdin uh, Broadway show. <laughs> Aladdin what? The Broadway show in Manhattan. Oh, oh, I see. It was 
um, it was the best Broadway show like I've ever seen because I've seen quite a few. It was like the best. So this kid is getting better. So what do you want to do for him? For her, I mean. Um, I can discharge. Yeah, just to charge her home, just to continue these things. Okay, I don't need that anymore. No, we can just shut her home. Maybe follow up in a week. Are we supposed to do like a pediatric consult on him or no? No, I don't think so. They didn't mention that. Oh. No. So that's that should be. So now we just counsel parents and that's mm -hmm. uh, like. Yeah, he doesn't need any screening. He's good. She's good to go. So this, so this is important case. Why? Because it's very common. Okay, and mm -hmm. most of the etiologies are self-limited. Okay, so how do you summarize this case for? So basically, um, this baby <clears throat> who's vomiting and having diarrhea is losing losing a lot of fluids from both ends, and and a lot of electrolytes as well. So we have to make sure this baby is not severely dehydrated. So when we do physical exam, some signs of dehydration in babies especially is like skin turbor, dry mucous membranes, sunken eyes. When you see these signs, you gotta admit the baby and take him to the ER and start IV fluid stat, right? And once you do that, you also want to make sure that this baby does not have any kind of bacteria or anything so you have to do stool culture to, to rule out anything that's causing diarrhea that could be serious or vomiting for that matter and then once you rule all the uh, everything out blood cultures urine cultures and all the stool cultures everything then you can just you know kind of um monitor the baby's fluid and do physical exams every four hours to make sure the baby is getting back to normal and then you discharge yeah, good job. So this is important to order because this gastroenteritis can be caused by many bugs. So it's important to order stool culture for Shigella, Campylobacter, mm -hmm. Salmonella, and Yersinia. Okay, as mm -hmm. well as enteroinvasive E. coli. Mm -hmm. And uh, some pathogens that require more than just supportive therapy for fluids. For example, Campylobacter jejuni, how do you treat that? If that was positive. If they are like all uh, self-limiting, no? Hmm? Are they self-limiting? No, Campylobacter jejuni, you gotta add erythromycin. How about, what if it was C. difficile? Huh? Or metronidazole. You give them metronidazole. How about systemic salmonellosis? I don't know. Supportive? You you, no, no, you give them fluoroquine alone or azithromycin or third generation is, cephalosporin like is, it, is this for babies or adults too no no even for babies yeah for babies and adults Wait. both i thought salmonella was like self-limiting no if it's systemic oh systemic i'm sorry systemic salmonella, yeah. and uh, so how about if the patient there's increased resistance of salmonella Okay, so they used to use Bactrim, okay, but because of the increased resistance for Salmonella, then you do fluoroquine and stuff. How about if the patient Giardia is positive, so what do you do for that? Oh, metronidazole. Yeah, or fluorozalindone or quinocrine, for example, these mm. things. Okay. Did you so, do? Huh? Did you do that? You didn't do the Giardia post. No, I did, did, I, I did Giardia, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, I did journey. Yeah, so history taking is the most important one because you ask about yeah. travel. Which one that's associated with travel? Giardia. Yeah, Giardia. You ask about immunization, sick contacts, mm -hmm. daycare attendance. Mm -hmm. How about daycare attendance? Which one? Rotavirus. Hmm? Campylobacter jejuni. It's not rotavirus? Rotavirus, maybe, yeah, too. Rotavirus mm -hmm. vomiting is predominant, I think. Campylobacter oh, okay. is a bloody diarrhea. No, 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 no. Rotavirus is a diarrhea dominant. 
there are no no sorry norovirus vomiting we don't rotavirus just there yeah yeah exposed yeah yeah, yeah camera back here is a bloody diarrhea yeah, yeah. bloody diarrhea yeah and you gotta ask about the duration of symptoms fever number of character and color of stool okay yeah. especially if there's any blood or mucus in the stool right so that is about it that's for the gastroenteritis like mm. um, Okay, let's do one more case and take us to see because I got another class nine thirty. Let me see. So uh, I think we got very few cases. Do you think is it okay if we continue them tomorrow? Because I got a class in a little bit uh, and I want to take some rest. Okay, sure, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I, I think we got two cases only, three cases only, yeah, that's good. That's good, I yay! Think we have, no, we have one, two, three, no, we have like six.